once I started doing some deep digging, what happens next is now I'm starting to realize more of who I am. I'm searching for myself and I began to change. And now I'm no longer the person that walked down that aisle so many years ago mm -hmm. because that person that walked down the aisle was marrying a potential. That person that walked down the aisle was only looking to be the pleaser. And I was very imbalanced. I wasn't able to receive. I just wanted to give, give, give. And I didn't realize that even, I mean, giving is good, but if you're not also receiving, then you're out of balance, you're out of alignment. So uh, once I started demanding more for myself and creating boundaries for myself, a lot of times that will kind of shake the whole relationship because that wasn't the foundation on which the relationship was birthed. Mm. So yeah, if I'm always making sure that everyone else is okay, now, once I say, hold on now, I want to make sure I'm okay. Sometimes people don't like that. You know, they always say like it's three sides to the truth. Yeah. Like your side, my side, and the truth, things like that. I don't believe that. I feel like the truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. But I respect people's opinion, right? So when you say like, um, it was time for me to like, like I was always giving, mm -hmm. right? But essentially like nobody was giving to me. I feel like, and I don't want to make this about, like, a particular person, but we here. Shit, we talking. Okay, let's talk. I feel like your husband at the time wouldn't wouldn't think that's true. Like, I feel like he would say he give, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, and maybe I'm projecting. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's be good for conversation, right? Because okay. maybe that's how men think. <clears throat> but, like, so you share his last name, right? Mm -hmm. Someone would say, like, he was an NFL player. So, like, he gave a lot. I mean, probably financial, whatever the case may be. He probably created this lifestyle. And a lot of times, as men, that's what we think we have to offer because we don't know any better. And I'm not defending nobody or nothing like that, but I'm just coming from a, from a perspective of a man. So when you say, like, you wasn't getting, what is it that, without having a, a fight between man and woman, what is it that you needed that you couldn't get, I guess? I needed vulnerability. I needed protection and covering. I needed to feel safe. I wanted to be able to feel safe in my femininity. Mm. But when you have to become hard and you're starting to carry on some of the more masculine traits, um, it's hard to feel safe when you're with a person that allows you to do some of the things that I feel like a woman shouldn't have to do. Like what? Um, when it comes to protecting an image or uh, when it comes to taking on certain stressors. I don't think women were really built to to take on stress. We're very spiritual. Men are very physical, you know? So when we become the protectors of the family, that's that's out of line, you know? Especially for me, um, when we were dating, I was working for him, you know? So I was his business manager. So when it came to, uh, when it came to making him look good, I was fine with looking bad. So I'll just give you an example, just something small. Say, for instance, there was a, an appearance that he had to do, and he doesn't want to show up for that appearance. Maybe maybe he forgot about it. Maybe he just doesn't feel like doing it. I'd be the bad guy just fine. I'd be like, you know what? I, I slipped up. It's my fault. I didn't add it to his calendar. Can we reschedule? I would take the heat for it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that was the way that the foundation of the relationship was built. It was built with me taking the fall. It was built with me being the bad guy. So long as he looked good, I was doing my job. Mm -hmm. So now that translates into a relationship that translates into a marriage. I was expecting the shift to happen. And that's the thing about expectation is that you think once we get married, oh, now you're going to do those things for me. Mm -hmm. And it never works out that way. So I won't say that he didn't show up and do anything. It's just that certain things that I felt as though I needed, he wasn't able to give me. And there were certain things that he needed that I wasn't able to give him. Mm. So it's definitely not one-sided. I take accountability for my part. Even with the marriage coming to an end, um, I have no problem saying that there are certain things that I know I could not do for him any longer. Mm. Um, I couldn't love him the way I felt as though he needed to be loved. And when I had what I needed or what I thought I needed to be loved, and I realized, like, you know what? This just isn't who he is. I had to get to a point of acceptance and say, okay, if nothing changes and he remains this way, can I live with him and be with him for the rest of my life? I don't want to change this man. I don't want to make him into the person because now he's not living an authentic life, you know? Um, and it becomes stressful because now 
I'm expecting you to show up as this person that you never were. Mm. But for the version of me, when I married you, it was enough. But what happens is when you go on these spiritual journeys and you start learning yourself and you start growing, it doesn't work if both of you aren't growing. Mm. And it doesn't mean we have to grow at the same rate, but we both have to be growing. One can't be stagnant, you know. Um, so it got to a point where he was willing to make changes for me, but the change wasn't consistent. And then it wasn't fair to him because I'm like, I don't want you to have to change who you are mm. to appease me. I want you to just show up and be who you are. And if you can show up and be who you are and that works for us, great. But if it doesn't, we got to make some decisions here. Mm. How hard was that to walk away? Very hard. Very hard. It took me years. The first time that I wanted to exit the marriage, I never used the D word because I never wanted to play around with it. But the first time that I wanted to exit the marriage, where I really was just like, yo, I don't know if I could do this. My daughter, who is now nine, she was six months old. So yeah. it had been years and years of just trying. And what's interesting is a lot of people saw uh, Love and Marriage DC. And I got a lot of flack for that show because that's the thing about reality TV. They will show me reacting. I'm a, I'm a reactor, or at least I was. I was, a, I was very much a reactor. So if you always see me reacting and then I'm open with the cameras, but then my spouse isn't as open as me, so he's going to be quiet. So if I'm always reacting, you're always showing me and then you're showing him just kind of sit there like he's just taking it, you know? Um, but when people saw me on reality TV, that last show, Love and Marriage DC, what they saw was me at my wits end. Mm. I was I was at a point where I was desperately begging and pleading for something from him. And it's funny, when we did that show, I kept telling the producers, I hope that this show will trigger something in him so that he can hear me, mm. you know, so that he can really feel where I'm coming from. I wanted him to be vulnerable with me. I felt like I didn't really know who he was anymore. I felt like he was giving me just surface. And I would tell him all the time over the years, I'm like, I'm not one of your fans. Like, I'm your wife. Like, you can be open and vulnerable with me. Like, talk to me, you know? So what they saw was me yelling, screaming, crying, pleading, all of the above. And then finally getting to a point where I was like, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't have walked down the aisle. Mm. What hurt the most, I guess, like after it's all said and done, after the smoke clears? Having to restructure a life for my children because I have three kids. Mm. And the idea that they no longer will have mommy and daddy under the same roof. Um, one thing about children is that they can feel the energy. They witness the dysfunction. Um, they know it's not normal. Something about it feels off. But mommy and daddy are still under the same roof. And I did not want my children to normalize what they saw as their standard of what a relationship should look like. Mm. Um, I feel like a lot of times we become what we witness as children, which is exactly why I am where I am. You know, it's what I witnessed as a child. I thought certain things were normal. Um, so I didn't want my children to look at that as normal. I wanted them to understand that I always preached love yourself. Mm. And they were literally watching me do the opposite in so many ways. They were watching me, you know, deplete myself, work myself into exhaustion. Um, my ex-husband tried where he could, but I just think when it came down to it, we were just speaking two different languages and we couldn't figure out how to interpret it the mm, right way. That's the part I heard the most. Um, do you think, man, I guess like before, because we're going to talk. Mrs. Carey, do you think that y'all went into it without a foundation or y'all had a foundation and it just separated? We had no foundation. Right. We went to marriage counseling, and our marriage counselors, when I look back on it, I'm like, oh, they were trying to get us to not walk down the aisle. They kept asking us, was this date, is this date hard set? Do y'all have to get married on March 3rd? And I'm just like, well, we're not changing the date. I already got my dress, and, you know, we already got the invitations out. We already got the, everything reserved. So it's like, it's one of those things when you're young. You know, I was I was 29 when I got married. Um, we had been dating for six years at the point that we had gotten married. So it just seemed like this was the next step, right? Mm. 
That's how we were raised. Mm -hmm. We were raised that marriage was the goal, not that marriage was the beginning. You know, so it was almost like we worked so hard, we get married, and then it's like, all right, now I can relax. And it's like, wait, what? What's going on? Why That's you... when the work start. Yeah. But it seemed like it was just so much comfortable, like just so comfortable. Like I don't have to do anything anymore. I got you. You know, and I'm like, no, let's keep it going, you know. One day I said something um, like I feel like with me and my lady, uh, my ex-wife, I feel like um, I feel like we should have started that marriage. As crazy as that sound, like yeah. we did it for six years before we got married, too. And I feel like we should have like. I feel like a lot of the problems that people go through in relationships is because they start like behind the curve right it, especially if you're talking about spiritual and religious mm -hmm. it's like man we do all these things that we shouldn't be doing in the, in the first place and we wonder why we having issues in our in our relationship because mm -hmm. we're not supposed to be here and i mean it's easier said than done we all human we all make mistakes but like yeah. you lay down have sex with somebody but then you're like well i'm not marrying this person if but you have sex with them and yeah. then you talk about god it's like it don't make sense just from a spiritual perspective right. <clears throat> and um I was like, I feel like I kind of wish we would have got married first because then everything that we was doing for each other would have meant something. Mm. We were playing house, right? And we were trying to like rebuild our house or like build this foundation when we, when we didn't have a foundation. When it was, if we're t talking about being equally yoked, we're talking about we're doing this for God or under God's covenant. And it's like, we're not. Mm. We're like, we're, yeah. we're trying to build a foundation that is not, it has no, no legs to stand on because right. we're already going into it wrong if that makes sense we're doing it wrong so it's like we're we're, we're having sex with each other we're, we're we're fornicating living in the house you know what i'm saying like we're doing all these things we tell about it's for god and we're trying to stay with each other but it's like bro what that don't even make sense it's a contradiction yeah it's like you're working backwards yeah i say all that to say is like <clears throat> i don't know i felt like um if we got married first it would have lasted longer i don't know what you think about that i'm just curious i just i feel like oh, that's a crazy yeah, no, I feel like when you date long, it's like, why are we dating? You know, like mm -hmm. if, if it took that many years for us to figure out whether or not we should get married, should we even have gotten married? You know, like, mm -hmm. isn't that something that you should just know right from the jump? Like, I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. Is it something that we have to wait out the process? I look at it a little different now. I feel like if I knew myself, then I would have attracted the right person hmm. that was on whatever frequency I was vibrating on. But apparently and clearly the person that I attracted at that point in time was what I needed to grow. Hmm. You know, like I feel like if we have these different wounds, if we have all of this unhealed and undealt with trauma, then we typically in relationship, that's where it's exposed. Mm. So a lot of times when you are dating someone, married to someone, what have you, there those relationships are mirrors. So when you start getting frustrated or telling that spouse or partner what to do and how they need to change this and change that, you're really talking to yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like, especially when we're young, a lot of those first relationships, the second relationships are those mirrors that's forcing us to grow. And it's possible to be with someone that will mirror you and y'all both grow together. But everybody's different. Some people don't want to grow. Some people don't want to change. Some people are fine and satisfied with who they are, with all their wounds and all their trauma. And they really don't want to change. They don't want to grow. They just want to stay where they are. And I feel like that's why it's important to really know yourself before you get into a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know yourself, you're going to attract somebody else who doesn't know themselves. And now you're going to be spending the rest of your life battling each other. And then now you add vows into it. And then if you add religion into it, they tell you to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, they say stay through thick and thin. And the only way you can get out is if you're cheating on each other. Mm. Or the only way you can get out is if it's abuse. But there's a such thing as emotional abuse, mm -hmm. you know, and that does a lot of damage. You know, you, you have to purge all of that. Um, and I don't think people really give equal weight to what, things can do to you mentally mm. outside of infidelity, outside of, you know, physical abuse. Like it can weigh on you and you still have to clear those things out too. So I feel like if we really paid attention to ourselves and allowed ourselves to feel, 
what we don't want to feel, those uncomfortable moments, and allow ourselves to like really go down that road and 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 learn ourselves and be more aware and then accept ourselves. I feel like we will attract other people who are doing the same work. 